right, welcome. I'm Walt Kazmowski. Thank you for joining us uh, on BevCam. We have a very special program for you today. Uh, I am uh, here on the set with, uh, and I'll pronounce this phonetically, Oyundelgar Batsakain. And uh, if you would pronounce your name for me. My name is Oyun Dilger Patsakhan. Okay. And uh, I can call you Oyuna. Yes, is that's that correct? right. Yeah. And Oyuna is uh, in the United States. She's actually from Mongolia. Yeah. And Oyuna is associated with a school in Mongolia called Oyuni Tuv School. Yeah. So, um, uh, Oyuna, can you tell us a little bit about the uh, Oyuni Tuv School in, sure. in Mongolia? Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, Oyuni Tuv School was established in 1999, and it is specialized in maths, English, computing, as well as uh, character education. Yeah, and um, in 1999, it was established by mother, my mother actually, who's been a uh, state school for about, uh, as a math teacher for over 28 years, and it has started with uh, just uh, 11 students. Now we have 136 students. So yeah. you have 136 students up from from 11, which is quite a, yeah. quite an accomplishment. Mm -hmm. Now tell us a little bit about yourself. You you actually. Uh, had uh, got a degree in applied mathematics at the National University in Mongolia. Yeah, yeah. And, go ahead. Yeah, uh, yeah. I've got my. I, I earned my uh, bachelor degree at in uh, <coughs> uh, Mongolia National University as an applied maths, and then I got an opportunity to study in England. Uh, to study English, improve my English, and uh, yeah, and uh, well, my dream was to being a software engineer. Actually, uh, okay. I wasn't really willing to commit it with education sector, <laughs> but uh, somehow because of my mother, I got a um, uh, chance to connect with. Um, you know, working as a part-time uh, maths and computing teachers, and yeah, and then while in a while, you know, I just find my uh, passion to be more committed into uh, education sector. I guess. Yeah. So you had gone to England, studied English, and you had wanted to be a software engineer. Yeah. <laughs> and so when you got back to Mongolia, <coughs> mm -hmm. then your through your mother, you got involved with teaching at the school. Exactly. Yeah. And you're still teaching at the school, correct? Yeah. And I love uh, what it says here that you you have a passion, and it says that your passion is for children and to plant the right seeds into the citizen of tomorrow. Tell us a little bit about that. <laughs> yeah, well, um, to be honest, you know, I didn't uh, have that kind of, you know, passion at the beginning, and uh, because our school was more like a willing to give more academic knowledge, you know, there were ones who could uh, achieve more like academic knowledge and so that they could get more career and things like that. And But um, in life, you know, we just learned that uh, you can't really live by your uh, knowledge in your brain, but the things that you have to learn in your soul rather than in the brain, and which is uh, more like moral education, so that uh, our school's vision become leading every single student to uh, to achieve their highest potential, which we believe that every single student who are coming to our school uh, are a very special, unique creation of God, and so we believe in that. So we just try to help them to find their special passion. Yeah. yeah. So your so the vision is leading every child to achieve his highest potential. Very uh -huh. a very noble aspiration. Yeah. And now you mentioned earlier, along with the subjects like IT and mathematics, mm -hmm. you also teach character yep. as a formal subject. That's Tell right. us a little bit about that. Yeah. Well, um, because uh, well, normally you know. Uh, everyone says moral is it, uh, moral education character is important and etc. But uh, well, because of that, you know, normally people say do something like um, donating things or more like uh, event things, not mm -hmm. a, like regular subject things, you know. So uh, we uh, 
use a character training institute actually from America and we use that curriculum to use in a Mongolian um, land I guess I would say yeah because you know the culture would be different so the examples are in different so but we use the curriculums and so for example um, in one specific uh, character if you have to teach there would be a uh, definitions and also in five I wills the problem promises that you have to discover from your life. So something like that. So we just um, teach it as a formal subject at, our, uh, at, a, at the school. Wonderful. Yeah. Now in the Mongolian system, uh, compare it to the American system where you have, you have uh, 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 a grade school level and then mm -hmm. some, some children will go to a middle school, 6th, 7th mm -hmm. and 8th grade, or some may go 1 to 8 and then 9 through 12 in high school. Yeah. How, how is the system in Mongolia? Yeah, well generally, you know, as you may know or not, uh, uh, we have a very high um, Russian inf influence in the old days before 1990s, and but um, the, because of that, a Mongolian education system is uh, uh, more like a, we call it a general school, which means in a one school building there is a first till. 10th grade we used to have, but uh, instead of uh, ten, 10 years of education, we are trying to meet with the international standard, so which means we are smoothly going into uh, 12 years of education. So at the moment we have uh, 11 years of education, but uh, uh, from a couple of, no, actually three, uh, four years ago, we uh, um, accepted the, uh, the students to enter instead of seven years older into a first grader, mm -hmm. but we decided to get a six years older to the uh, elementary school. So okay. we have a one whole building and f from, from one till 12 years. Right. So you have how many students do you have now in the 136. school? 136. 130, yeah. and they go from first grade till, to 12th exactly. grade? Exactly. Okay, and how big is the staff? How big is the teaching? Um, yeah, well, we have um, five administrators, well, yeah, five administrators and um, uh, seven, uh, five, ten uh, full time teachers and four part time teachers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, I understand that the school recently won uh, an award. Can you mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, well, Mongolia. Uh, in Mongolia, you know, uh, every year we, you just award uh, the best school, like on, depending on the academics and depending on the good so social activities and things like that. So probably I presume that, you know, the teaching character would be the best, uh, the basic uh, require, require, requirement to mm -hmm. be uh, getting at this award, I would mm -hmm. say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That, that's wonderful. Now, uh, are are there a lot of private? You are a private school. Now, yeah. Are there a lot of private schools in in Mongolia? Or, yeah, or? we do have a lot of private schools. But uh, well, one of the things that uh, would make our school unique from the, those private schools is that uh, we don't get uh, take any exams, entrance exams, to those who are wanting to study at our school because of our vision. Because we believe mm -hmm. every single student has a unique. Path Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, the well, m many of the school, private schools, especially in order to get the students, they get uh, ex entrance <coughs> exams. So if the students get good point, they could receive it. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Now uh, the um, um, I understand that because of some problems with uh, with uh, weather, extreme weather mm -hmm. conditions. Uh, a number of years ago, some of the herders that, that would have uh, flocks of, of, uh, of sheep and so forth. T tell us about that and what that did to the population that, that then came into Ulaanbaatar, mm -hmm. your capital. Yeah. Tell us about that. Yeah, definitely. Uh, well, because of the um, extreme weather, as you said, that uh, we have extreme weather, well, minus 40 Celsius, you know, in the, you know, we could have that and so it would lead for many herdsmen to have extreme challenge in their lives to losing numbers of their animals dead so that led and also uh, uh, the development of the ca uh, capital city so that you know many of the countries uh, people from countryside willing to move in city to find out the better life so that led uh, many public schools to have a over 
overwhelmed numbers of students. For example, you could have like 30 till 60 students in one class, in one, class. one teacher, wow. would, which would be impossible to you know, reach every single student. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. yeah, so that's why um, people, you know, like my mom wanted to, um, you know, help the governments and also wanted to have to reach m many students to, you know, find their mm -hmm. passion and to find their good quality mm -hmm. education. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you, you, the school is located in Ulaanbaatar? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I understand. Now, um, so you are here. This is the first time you've been in the United States. Oh yes, it is uh, first, the very first time in the United States, and also the longest trip that I had in my life, entire my life. <laughs> so, so t tell us about that. Well, you went from yeah, it took me 28 hours of trip, which meant you know I had to go from Mongolia to Japan for about five hours, and I had to t wait there the next flight about three or four hours. And from Japan to San Francisco, it took me nine hours, and I had to wait there three hours <laughs> <laughs> to get a next flight from San Francisco to Boston. So yeah, here I am. Well, welcome <laughs> Still to the, alive. <laughs> welcome to the world of international oh, travel. Yeah. So yeah. now, how uh, uh, your your time that you've spent so far in there? How long have you been in the United States now? Well, so far I've been here uh, seven days. Actually, it's oh. the seventh day. Okay. Yeah. So what what are your what are your, uh, your your what are your thoughts? What are your impressions of the United States so far? Was it what you expected? Yeah. Well, you know what? Funny thing. Um, I don't know. Somehow I just expected uh, more like white people would be like in a border to checking your no, you know passports and visas and everything <laughs> but I didn't see any white people <laughs> whole range of numbers of international people you know like Mexican Arabian and you know like different yeah. Asian even you know That's people right. were so like inviting me to America you know which was interesting mm -hmm. but I really enjoy because the people in America uh, I really feel that they are so blessed people people you know they living in such a wonderful beautiful place they yeah. could enjoy yeah, yeah. and I, I i i would i would guess that somebody like yourself i mean mongolia is certainly a, a harsh country from mm. a from a from a weather standpoint right. and, and the extremes of temperature dry mm. mountainous country so coming over here That's it's right. quite a quite a contrast yeah. now now you are over here uh, uh, for uh, um, among other things, uh, uh, on a on a um, uh, on an effort to raise some scholarship That's money right. for for your school. Can you tell That's us a right. little bit about yeah. that? Well, um, because of um, the uh, education, you know, entering to the private school is quite a difficult thing. But but matter of fact, our school is not a really the most expensive school in Mongolia, actually. But I do have uh, many people uh, asking me if there are uh, any scholarships to study at our uh, at the at the uh, school because mm -hmm. of their financial background and also because of the uh, like you know the orphan children you know why would they need to be like limited in different environment you know and so. Uh, um, the friend of mine who invited me to here in Boston was actually used to work at our school as a volunteer English teacher mm -hmm. for two years. And, well, and her we, name, let me, her name is Sylvia Leftin, right? Yes, so, that's right. And, and so Sylvia invited you over here, yeah? Exactly, yeah. Well, the reason why is that Sylvia was, um, uh, and I were, you know, discussing things and try to reach as many children to study at our school and especially for those students from orphan and also for those people who have very harsh financial difficulties in their family and even the students for, uh, who's been studying to our school and wanted to continue their study but uh, you know if they have like very hard financial situations in their family they can't continue their study you know mm -hmm. so we've been discussing about that and also she um, the Sylvia been at our school through international uh, international service uh, organizations so um, she's she and I were discussing and then also she had a contact with um, one of the uh, non-governmental organizations mm -hmm. in Mongolia which is called JCS mm -hmm. and 
uh, one uh, the director of the JCS uh, PH has PhD in uh, education sector which means very highly concerned about those matters and so three of us been discussing about it and then try to, to raise some scholarship mm -hmm. so uh, yeah the reason is to to raise some scholarship so trying to invite more friends of a uh, unity school yeah fantastic now uh, uh, so and we'll put this up uh, on the screen as well so if someone is interested in uh, in making a contribution uh, they should send it to the International Service Organization or InterServe USA and it's P.O. Box 418 uh, Upper Darby, Pennsylvania. That's right. Uh, and they should, uh, in order to make sure that that donation uh, goes to your school, they should annotate on their contribution on their check that it's that their money is designated for scholarships for children at the Oyuni dot Tuv school. Is yeah. that correct? Yeah, Oyuni Tuv school. Oyuni yeah. Tuv school. Okay. Um, and uh, tell me a little bit. Um, uh, y y the students that you do they board at your school, or do they do they? Uh, is it a boarding situation, or do they go home every night and come back in the in the morning? It's not a boarding school. No, yeah, they just go into the school and then go back to ho their home. Oh, yeah. Okay. Now tell us about some of the <coughs> social activities and some of the after school activities mm -hmm. that that the school provides. Yeah. Well, we do have numbers of uh, uh, social activities in order to. Um, in order to improve their talents as well and also to you know more practical way of uh, um, learning the characters you know in it's not worthy just to listen up but mm -hmm. making an action is most important thing so uh, for example um, every uh, March we do have International Women Day which we could make it uh, Mother's Day so uh, because we learn uh, gratefulness the character gratefulness and mm -hmm. so we, on this uh, character we have a one uh, promise that uh, says I will write thank you note Oh, so every student just writes a thank you note to their mothers, to the teachers they adore, and the, the people who had been mm -hmm. very grateful for them, and something like that. And recently, actually, uh, last year, our student uh, raised some money because saving from the pocket money, and also they uh, collected the, the books and toys that they are not using, mm -hmm. and we collected them and then just gave the, to one of the orphan kindergarten. Oh, isn't that, isn't that so, wonderful? So, uh, you know, the students could just make them themselves, so which means, you know, they just planting differences from the different children in kindergarten. How, how, you know? how wonderful. Yeah, how wonderful. so it's been in an action and it, there are a lot of things to do, but still, you know, we are in the progress. Yeah, that's <laughs> wonderful. Now, Sylvia wanted to mention, why don't you hand me this, this bag that you have here, <laughs> and I'll ask our cameraman to, yeah. to focus in uh, on, uh, on this. Yeah. And well, uh, tell us about this. This is uh, is this a traditional craft or is yeah, this? Yeah, it is a traditional craft. But actually, uh, one of the tribe in Mongolia, the Kazakhs, uh, they are. Uh, they do it uh, handmade, it, mm -hmm. and it's very traditional uh, patterns on mm -hmm. it. And uh, this is uh, Sylvia's favorite color. And when I see this color, wherever and whenever I w uh, see, I think of Sylvia. You think of Sylvia. <laughs> very That's good. why I bought it there uh, right. from well, I'll, Mongolia, I'll, I'll have that. especially I'll for her. <laughs> I'll, I'll hand that uh, yeah. back to you. Um, so uh, we're gonna we're gonna state again um, the um, if, if somebody wants to make that contribution, they can send it to InterServe, mm -hmm. USA, PO Box 418, Upper Darby, PA, mm -hmm. and they should make an annotation on their check that it's intended for scholarships for the children of the Oyuni Tuv School, and I'll spell it O Y U N I I. Yep. Dash T U V mm -hmm. O Y U N I I dash T U V, and I also have um, uh, a um, a website that, that people that in this country can look at yep. www which is O Y U N I I dash Tuv T U V dot M N backslash English. English, yeah. And so that if they are interested in learning a little bit more about the, yeah. the uh, 
or uni to school they can they can go on that website and yeah. find out a little bit more yeah. actually we do have a Facebook page as well oh so, there you go yeah you, know, you know if you just type our school's name or uni to on Facebook it will appear and you can see numbers of pictures on it from mm -hmm. our school activities and yeah things like that wonderful and, and I love your vision leading every child to achieve his highest uh, potential. That's right. Well, Ayuna, thank you very much. I enjoyed having yeah. you on, on the show, having you here at BevCam. Now, how much longer will you be? When are you returning to Mongolia? Yeah, I'm going, to, I'm going back 31st uh, okay. of July, which means uh, next Tuesday. So, yeah. Okay. So I'm so enjoying it, and thank you f so much for inviting this uh, interview, and hope everything, everyone who is watching this program enjoyed this. Yeah. Thank very you. well, very well put. And Rini, thank you very much. And I'd like to uh, 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 thank our viewers for watching this very special program. And again, if you want to uh, contribute, uh, the, uh, the address uh, is on, on the screen now, uh, InterServe USA, PO Box 418, Upper Darby, PA. And uh, for BevCam, this is Walt Kosmowski. Thank you for watching.